They got what they deserved. Uh, it's a crash and burn for the Democratic establishment. Blame the Latino. Blame black men. Blame white women. Blame whomever. So you, you have said that Democrats shouldn't be, quote, freaking out over every single thing Trump does. Well, what happened to all the threat of democracy talk? Talk of him being a fascist. Do you want to see a Democrat deliver a brutal reality check to their own party? Well, we have former presidential candidate Marion Williamson, who drops a chilling message to her own party. In summary, she says that they have crashed and burned. Also, Senator John Fetterman went on CNN today and echoed the same sentiments. But there's still a major problem here, which we'll show you in this video, that there are other individuals who are not getting the message. Let's actually start with the message that Miriam had for the Democratic Party. You know, anybody with a modicum of historical understanding knows that when there is a large group of desperate people, people in fear, people in confusion, the emergence of a strong man is almost inevitable. And so the lack of psychological perspicacity, the lack of emotional astuteness uh, that is involved in the pseudo-sophisticate uh, crowd that currently runs the Democratic Party uh, is very unfortunate. They got what they deserved. Uh, it's a crash and burn for the Democratic establishment. But we didn't get what we deserved. And um, the Democratic Party now needs to have the political equivalent of a truth and a reconciliation commission, where there's a deep and humble inquiry into what what has happened that the Democratic Party has lost its emotional and psychological connection to such a wide swath of the American electorate. Well, I can tell you what happened because you actually alluded to it in the beginning of your statement there, Miriam, which is that one, they lack emotional intelligence. So what does that mean? They clearly don't have any empathy for the feedback that they kept getting from the voters. I mean, voters were screaming it at the top of their lungs what the top issues were. But every step of the way, the party and the obviously left-wing media would do what? Gaslight everybody. And because we have people leading this country that behave this way, it has caused hard times for a lot of Americans out there. And so what is that quote? I think she also was alluding to in the beginning here is that hard times create what? Strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men and weak men create hard times. And it goes on and on and on. And so now we're at a point where strong leadership is required in order to get us back on track. Right now, it doesn't look like that's where they're going. Right now, it looks like the post-game analysis is being run by people who think just blame everybody else. Blame the Latinos, blame black men, blame white women, blame whomever. Um, and for a system, for an organization, for a political party, just like for an individual, you're going to have to sit down and look in your own heart and your own conscience and into your own mirror and to say, what was my part in this? If the Democratic Party does that, there will be a regreening, there will be a rebirth, there will be a, that's where the phoenix will rise from. And if it doesn't, uh, anybody interested in a more left-wing populism uh, will simply have to forge another path. But, but people have seen through it. The curtain has been pulled aside. Uh, all this codependent, whatever the DNC says, it was just a little man in there. It was never a Wizard of Oz. And we need to get back to our own critical thinking. And uh, I think this is a, a wake up call for the American people that I think ultimately will actually be good for this country. In other words, the party needs to return back to common sense. It needs to go back to being center left, which means we need to adapt moderate approaches to our policies. And when we go out there and we try to sell that message, that it should be in a way that people will resonate. Now, me and you know that is common sense. That's exactly what Trump does at the highest level, of course. Um, and so the only real path for the Democrats at this point is they're going to have to take a page out of Trump's book, which is to lean more into populism and be more moderate and speak the language of the voters. Now, as it stands today, it doesn't look like that's exactly going to happen because they're still stuck in this denialism of what actually happened, which is unfortunate. And now it's gotten to a point where Senator John Fetterman is coming out and he's having to tell people, hey, you guys got to stop making the same mistakes. Here he is on CNN saying just that. Senator, always good to see you. You have said that Democrats shouldn't be, quote, freaking out over every single thing Trump does. Are you freaking out at all about any of these cabinet picks, I wonder? 
Well, I mean, there's some that I would absolutely uh, be excited to vote for, like my colleague from uh, Florida or the representative uh, uh, from New York, uh, of course. And then there's others that are just absolute trolls, uh, just like Gates and those things. And that's why, you know, Democrats, you know, like uh, Trump that gets the kind of thing, I mean, he gets the kind of thing that he wanted, you know, like the, the, the freak out and, and all of those things. And, and he hasn't even been, uh, it's still not even, not even Thanksgiving yet. And if we're having meltdowns, you know, every tweet or every appointment or all those things, I mean, it's going to be four years. Why are the Democrats, why is the left media going to spend so much time on every little thing that he does? Shouldn't they be spending that same amount of energy, that same amount of time on things that actually matter to the voters? The voters do not care about whether you believe Trump is a fascist or that he was hosting a rally in Madison Square Garden due to Nazi reasons. It doesn't matter to voters. Okay, so if you guys are getting value from this video, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. If you guys want to support us further, go to the link in the description below. You can shop the merch store or buy us a cup of coffee. What they care about is what I've been screaming and why I knew the election would turn out the way that it did is they're concerned about their money, their health care, their safety, right? Uh, the wokeness inside the school systems. I mean, that's what they care about. And they just refuse to accept it, especially over the past eight years. And so now uh, it blew up in their face. And just the last time, I think the last time I was on your network, I was warning about the jackpot. And I, I used that metaphor of the slot machine, the 777. And if Trump wins, then, then it's likely that's going to happen. He's going to get the House. You know, we're going to have the Senate and the presidency. And the real jackpot is the Supreme Court. And that's been very clear that that's a, a strong a conservative slant. So they can run the table right now. And at least for the next two years, you know, those are the things, if you really want to be concerned about that, that they have the absolute ability to, to run the table, at least for the next two years. And that's what I think we should all be uh, concerned on, not small tweets or, you know, random kinds of appointments. Now, clearly, I don't support John Fetterman. I don't agree with his policies. But this is the type of discourse. This is the type of conversation I would respect someone debating over. Hey, what type of policies are the Republicans going to push through or try to get pushed through over the next two years? Let's discuss that. But this conversation about, well, why are you appointing this person? This person's not qualified or they're disqualified or they're evil or they're a Russian asset. You are continuing to make the same mistake <laughs> that got you guys in this position to begin with. And so if they continue to make the same mistake, if they don't listen to what he just said and Marion Williams, we'll find ourselves in a position where the Republicans will control the government for the next 12 years. And just maybe they should not use the same strategy of character assassinations, like telling people that Trump was a threat to democracy. And now they're saying that, you know, Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset. I mean, they're just not getting it. Uh, here is Charlemagne and Alex Schultz <laughs> talking about this. Check this out. Donald Trump wins the election. We all know that. Yeah. Um, he was in the White House this week, right? Joe Biden literally was like, Welcome back, right? Home, baby. Okay. Home, baby. And, and Home, he, baby. And even in, uh, you know, the vice president, Kamala Harris's concession speech, she talked about how, you know, she's there, she's there to help the next administration, you know, peaceful transfer of power, all of that good stuff. Yeah. So I observed those two things. I observed not just the White House, but then the speech that President Biden gave and the speech the vice president, Kamala Harris, gave. And so I asked a simple question. The question I asked was, well, what happened to all the threat of democracy talk? What happened to the talk of him being a fascist? Mm -hmm. I'm speaking, I, I literally am speaking about those two people in particular. Mm -hmm. That's why I say you would think in those speeches that they gave mm. that they would have said, hey, y'all left up America. Things are about to be a bumpy ride for y'all. But it was none of that. So it was really just boxing. What do you mean? They just were promoting a fight. You know how when I the fighters know. talk crazy shit to each other, the second the fight is over, they're hugging each other, kissing each other, taking selfies. Well, that's the qu the question I asked. Was it? Well, did they really believe those things? And when I say they, mm -hmm. I'm talking about Vice President Kamala Harris and President Biden. Okay, so it's clear that Charlemagne does not want to accept the uh, truth, and the truth is very clear that 
uh, most people in the government do not believe Trump is a threat to democracy. What they believe is he's a threat to the deep state. He's a threat to the establishment. That is a different <laughs> conversation, right? Uh, and no, we don't live in a democracy. We all know this, but it's just a sexy word for them, I guess. It's something that they coined, of course. Uh, anyways, I'm not surprised by how, uh, I guess, delusional uh, Charlemagne is. Um, and it just shows you how disconnected these people really are from the reality. Let me show you this clip. So because the establishment is threatened by Trump, they first started to attack him with the Russian hoax just days as soon as he took office. And here's Adam Schiff going back to that claim. Check this out. You were censured in the House last year uh, for, in their view, holding positions of power during the Trump presidency as, as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And according to them, quote, abusing this trust by saying there was evidence of collusion between Trump's campaign and Russia. And I wonder if you are feeling at all introspective at all about that that was, according to your according to the Mueller report and according to your your Republican colleagues, an overstatement. And I wonder if you think in any way you you uh, help set the table for these disruptors. You know, first of all, it wasn't an overstatement. There is evidence of collusion. The Trump campaign manager was meeting with Russian intelligence and giving them internal polling data, just to give you one example. Uh, and the Mueller report sets all this out. It does say, quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities, which doesn't mean that he didn't, you know, that there weren't meetings, but uh, they didn't find Mueller evidence. Mueller says that, too. He says the fact that we didn't find proof beyond a reasonable doubt doesn't mean there wasn't right. evidence of uh, conspiracy or coordination. So in, in other words, uh, he still truly believes that, um, you know, Trump colluded with Russia. He will continue to believe that. That's why Trump coined him uh, the enemy from within, because Adam Schiff is more focused on trying to nail Trump over Russian uh, collusion or this Russia hoax instead of just serving his constituents, right? Or doing right by the American people by making the case on why Kamala Harris should have been elected. So um, I, I'm not shocked here, but guys, the, the bottom line is if they don't listen to Marion Williams, if they don't listen to Charles Barkley, that video I dropped yesterday, which I'll link towards the end, end of this video, if they don't listen to John Fetterman. They will continue to lose power um, because the American people are fed up with the nonsense. An example of that nonsense is how they trotted out all of these celebrities to endorse Kamala Harris. Now you have one of them by the name of William Shatner who's coming out and he's shocked that she lost and he can't explain why. I can't, I don't know why, why the Democrats lost. I don't, I don't understand why the Democrats lost. I, well, but people will be writing books about it for years, many reasons. Part of it was, you know, uh, just he, Biden should not have stayed on so long. That I understand. But uh, inflation, uh, prices have come down. Um, uh, the economy is good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they voted against her. Well, against I mean, the party. As oh well, I certainly could go on and on about that. Um, but basically, you know, people. She was not a great candidate. Let's be honest. Um, when she said, when they well, asked, why isn't she a great candidate? She combined several trends of thought here black uh woman uh that's not that's not a candidate those are you know that's identity politics that's well, one of the democrats those are elements oh my god that is just embarrassing to watch but these are the people that she clearly paid okay to endorse her hundreds okay this is hollywood all right this is how they think they're saying well the economy is great yeah, dipshit. Of course, the economy is great for you because I'm sure you have a portfolio. I'm sure you have investments. And if you have played your cards correctly and you're in the stock market, right, or you own multiple businesses, you're, you're part of private equity, right, uh, you are rich. Yeah, it's been a great economy for you, of course. And I'm not knocking anybody who's in that position. I'm, I hope everybody gets to that level. What I'm saying is the people who went to the ballot box those individuals who decided the election were individuals who are not in those positions. And of course, the other reason is because they are unhinged. Listen to this. If you are wondering why we will never have free college in the United States and why we will continue to lag behind other countries in reading and writing, it's because the only voter base that is still voting Republican 
is non-college educated whites. If non-college educated whites didn't vote in this election, Kamala Harris would have won in a landslide. The reason that there will never be free college is because people who have a college education vote Democrat. The reason that we will never have free college in the United States of America is because non-college educated whites are the only voter base continuing to prop up the Republican Party. And the only way the Republican Party can stay in power is by making sure that as few white people get a college education as possible. It wasn't just non-college whites that decided this election. It was Latinos. It was African-Americans. It was minorities. So are they all in that same sentence too? Are you blaming all of them? Right? I, here's the problem with identity politics. It obviously removes the requirement for common sense. Common sense says that college is a scam today. Unless you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, which please get educated. Um, out of that, why are you going to college to get uh, indoctrinated by these progressive ideals that clearly will uh, ruin this country, right? I don't think this guy truly understands who he's talking about. And he clearly did not look at the exit poll data. But my whole point of showing you in this video, this is the problem. Instead of doing soul searching and listening to what Marion Williams said and trying to really adopt a more populist stance about what has taken place and what they should do moving forward. No, no, no. They want to triple down on what got them in trouble in the first place. So here's a post that she just put up this morning. The level of self-awareness needed by the Democratic Party right now doesn't seem to be forthcoming, leaving millions of people feeling there's basically nowhere to go with our deepest earnings to create a better world. From economic justice to environmental responsibility to peace creation, if we have no institutional conduit through which to turn those forces into political power, then our task will be to create one. And what she is really calling for is what you guys continue to hear me say, which is the only path for them moving forward might be led by an AOC type of person, um, is someone who's clearly on the outside, someone who is anti-establishment, literally a copy of Donald Trump but on the Democratic side. That doesn't mean they have the personality of Donald Trump, but someone who's running on the same type of talking points, but filtered through the lens of the Democratic Party. All right, so listen, what do you think about Marin Williams' uh, statement? Do you agree with her? I mean, drop some reasons why, if you do, in the comment section below. What do you think the Democratic Party should do differently? Listen, I'm a conservative. I'm not gonna vote for a Democrat, okay? But I do support discourse. I want to have debates. I want to engage with people who have a different way of thinking. That is healthy for our nation. It's healthy for me so I can see different perspectives and become a more thoughtful person. And it's healthy for the other side. But right now, that's not what they're doing, right? They're hiding in their little corners and still claiming the same reasons on why they lost on identity politics. Um, but I want to know what your thoughts are about what she said and what John Fetterman said. Uh, put those answers in the comment section below. Now, I said earlier in this video that they also need to listen to Charles Barkley because he has a funny way of putting things. And he goes off on the Democratic Party, calls them stupid, by the way, uh, for losing to Trump. So if you guys want to check out that video, all you have to do is click on it because it's coming up right now.